Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. Some of the some of the younger people that might be trying to get into or start out laying out sheet metal or whatever that might not have the advantages of going to formal training might be having a little bit of a dif difficulty in understanding what it is that I'm doing whenever I lay something out or whenever I talk about laying it out. So I've kind of come up with a, a little more simplified version of what I'm looking at as I'm thinking about all these dimensions and things I'm rambling about so rapidly, you know, wherever I'm laying something out. So take a look at this real quick. We're going to do just a quick and simple flange, seven and a half inch tall plenum, nothing fancy. It's going to be ten and a half inches wide by uh, 16 inches long uh, and seven and a half inches deep. Nothing. Here you can see easily what I've got drawn out here. Seven and a half inch high. It's going to have a half inch double hem flange all around the perimeter. It's going to have a drive on the six or the ten and a half inch dimension and the 16 inch is going to have the S's. You can see the dimensions are 16 by ten and a half by seven and a half. So if you just look at this as though it's just one half of a section of duct for you guys that are that are just beginning out and just open it up like a book. That's, that's what you're doing whenever you're laying out a piece of duct work on a sheet of metal. You're actually looking on the inside of that duct and laying essentially half of it up open like a book. So let's just draw down here the small section, the wider section, and then add the dimensions you know you're going to have to have for two half inch marks down here for a double hem flange, a one inch on one end for a Pittsburgh, typically on the smaller dimension of the two pieces, uh, the two different dimensions, and then a quarter inch on the opposing end. So now we have to do is fill in the dimensions. Here's this here is going to be 10 and 1 half inches here. This is going to be 16 inches here. This is going to be 1 quarter inches over here. This is going to be 1 over here. So it's 1 plus 10 and a half plus 16 plus a quarter. So 10 and a half 16 is 26 and a half plus a quarter is 26 and 3 quarter plus 1 is 27 and 3 quarters. That's how rapidly you can figure the cut size on a half duck. Now you know the height is going to be seven and one half inches high and that's all the way to the raw edge the way I measure it. It's not the way I think that actual trained sheet metal men do it, but that's the way I measure it. Seven and a half inches plus the one inch right here. Seven and a half plus one is eight and a half. So your cut size is immediately figured to be set 27 and three quarter by eight and a half. Take that times two. So if you're making yourself a note, you go two, 27 and a half by eight and a half, cut them out and you're ready to trim and make your two pieces of duct half. So what we're going to do is we're going to go by laying out our height which is eight and one half inches. So we're just going to mark eight and a half here. Now let's just go 17 because we're going to do two at the same time. Eight and a half and eight and a half is 17. Let's go with eight and a half. 17 from the outside edge. Grab your straight edge. Now we know we're ten and a half inches, so let's start off down here. We're ten and a half inches plus the one is going to be eleven and a half inches. So we'll come in here at eleven and a half inches. Mark it out here on this one at eleven and a half inches. Then we're going to be sixteen and a quarter beyond that. So eleven and a half, sixteen and a quarter. Eleven and a half plus sixteen and a quarter. And now we magically have the two half pieces of this duct already laid out. Now we're going to cut it in half. There's our two halves. Take our handy dandy scribe. We know our Pittsburgh is going to be on this end here, so we can mark our Pittsburgh. We can mark our Half inch double hem, which is going to be a one inch mark and a half inch mark. Do the same thing on this one. Half inch, one inch. Now we know we have our quarters. Then up on the top we have the one inch for the S and drive. A lot of times I'll take a little one like this and I'll just rip it right off the edge of the workbench just, just like this. You set it right on there like that. And just rip it right off the workbench. Does a real good job, a real fast job. So here we are. We've got our layout, so now we're going to snip this out.
Pittsburgh cross break, cross break, 90 quarter inch. Now remember on a flanged plenum, you always do your double hem flanges first. Now a lot of guys don't do a double hem, and that's okay if you don't, depending on the thickness of your material. If you're running 24 gauge plenum, double hem's not necessary. If you're running 28 inch material, you better, you better double hem them. Now this is where your Pittsburgh gets smashed. do this backwards if you like. You can fold it this way first. You can actually do it this way backwards too. Then of course the cleat bender. I'm going to have to work this left-handed so it's not going to be as smooth. Bring it all the way up. Raise it up. Drop this out. Latch it back down. Just like that. Raise it up. Go down and get the second one. Bring them up. Drop them out. Latch it back down. There's a second one. So here it is, just that quick, 10 by 16, seven and a half inches tall, double flange, double hem flanged thing for setting on top of an electric air handler. This will go on into that uh, equal full way transition, go into the back draft damper assembly, and that in turn will go into the next fitting I'm going to assemble, which is gonna be a trunk line T. Five piece fitting is always difficult. As a plenum T, the plenum discharges into this, dual trunk lines go that direction. So there'll be transitions off of one side and then this side will carry on this dimension for a duct section or two. This will be a first reducing fitting dropped off of a uh, off a return air trunk line. The next is going to be a pair of supply air trunk line transitions.
supplier trunk line transition going from uh, 8 by 20 to 8 by 16. There'll be two of these. Next comes two short sections of return airdrop. Next is a few sections of 8 by 20 duct. And up next is six more sections of another size duct. Well, I finally got the uh, the rest of the material that I had made. I finally got that all assembled. So uh, now I'm getting ready to load it, take over to the job. Uh, let my son help me unload it and everything when he gets off from work. I I'm just getting it thrown into the back of the truck right now. But I was just kind of illustrating that sometimes it's very difficult with a moderate amount of sheet metal getting it delivered any distance at all without it sitting in the back of the truck and beating the fire out of itself. You know what I mean? And getting all dented up. I don't like the scratches and dents and everything in the sheet metal. I'm getting ready to jostle this in here and get it uh, securely stacked to where it's not going to do any damage to itself and meet my son over, my, uh, over at his house and we're going to get this stuff into his basement yet this evening. Whenever I get over there and uh, get some stuff in, torn out and then go back to installing, I'll be able to get the additional measurements to complete the installation. So until then, you know what? This is TrackMan44 and I'm out of here guys.